Well, hello, and thank you for joining me for another ITY interview. I have with me Hui Lo. He is the Product Marketing Manager for APAC for WD Corporation. Welcome to the program. Hi, thanks for having me on. So I thought uh, we'd just basically start off with a bit of an introduction about uh, yourself and uh, the, qu the quick history of, of, of WD. Yeah, thanks a lot, Alex. Hi, so my name is Hui Lo. I'm mm -hmm. the uh, Product Manager for Western Digital across Asia Pacific, and I'm uh, glad to have you on. And today, basically, I'm just going to run through it with you, introducing our new 3D NAND SSDs that both Western Digital and Sandisk have launched. Excellent. So um, now you were the first to introduce uh, SSDs using 64-layer 3D NAND technology back uh, in May at Computex in uh, the Taiwan's Expo, the Computex that's on every year. And uh, you launched this with the uh, WD Blue 3D SSD, which I'll just hold up in front of the, the camera here. There's one of them there. And you also launched it with the, uh, the SanDisk Ultra 3D, which I'm whoop, upside down. I'm just holding it there. Now, I'm sorry you can't see it on your side, but it, it's in the screen. So um, just for those who aren't aware, can you just give us a simple description of NAND and uh, why it had to go 3D to advance the state of the art? Yeah, so basically with, with the NAND technology, it's basically like a solid state drive. Mm -hmm. And what happens from here is that it basically progresses from 2D into 3D. So maybe before I set this uh, the interview, yeah. I can also share with you some more detailed information that we have used during our product launches all across APEC and also globally So that, well. that's, on the, that's on the slides, right? Yes, that's yeah, right. So um, I've just made that full screen, so um, go for okay. it. Great, thanks a lot. All right, so thank you very much for taking the time. So I'm going to run through with you on the presentation of this uh, slide that I have. Mm -hmm. All right, so as you notice, from evolution from, uh, from NAND, from 2D NAND, we basically reach a physical limitation. Mm. Right? What it means is that you don't have enough size to continue building, to go beyond like the shrinking of the die from like 43 NM into 19, into 15. As it gets smaller, it gets kind of like a, a squeeze. You don't yeah. have enough space, too crowded. I mean, it's a little so, bit like with, with processors shrinking the nanometer dies as well, getting smaller and smaller. It's the same thing that's yes. happening with um, SSD, tech, SSD chips. That's correct. So as you get smaller and, and such, the endurance basically is, um, it's a comp uh, is a compromise in a way. Mm -hmm. So to avoid compromising, we have to build up to get it into bigger. And that's where we need to go into vertical stacking into the 3D NAND technologies. And this is where we first launched our first world's first 64 layer mm -hmm. a 3D NAND onto both of our uh, WD products and also for Sandisk. And how this works through the years is that through many years of development, it have went from 24 layer to 48 layer and eventually into 64 layer. Mm. And, it's, and it started with, in uh, 2017 when we start pulling in our uh, 48 layer uh, NAND mm -hmm. into a 3D. And then eventually into this year itself, that's when we roll it full scale onto the 64 layer uh, uh, 3D NAND itself. Sure. So it's remarkable. It's been through the years, continuous development that we have reached this stage itself. So finally, I'm now achieving the world's first SSD client-based 64-layer uh, 3D NAND. And the easy way for people to think of that is like a skyscraper in a modern city. You can only, yes, exactly you, know, that. You, you can go, you can, you can dig down, but in, this, in on NAND you got to dig up. <laughs> you got to build up. Yes, that's, <laughs> that's exactly how you can explain it to a layman. Mm. That this going, but basically going to vertical, then you can stack a lot more into it. And also that also brings us to the next portion of the advantages. Sure. So I mean, there's no point creating all these technology advances without the end consumer in mind, right? Mm -hmm. So the key thing here, the first thing I want to talk about is on the left hand side on high capacity. Mm. So with achieving of a 3D NAND with vertical stacking, it allows us to break through from one terabyte into two terabyte and then eventually into higher capacities as well. Mm. So without 3D NAND, we are not able to go beyond one terabyte and such. Mm. So that's the first benefit. The second benefit is that it has more, uh, it's considered like a power saving. Mm -hmm. So it has more power savings when you use your SSDs in your PCs or on your notebooks as well. If you think about it, when you use your SSD on a PC, the power saving, I mean, it's continuously plugged onto the wall anyway. Mm -hmm. The power saving doesn't exactly help that much. But if you think about it, when you use it onto a notebook user, the guy is out on the street all the time doing sales presentations and such, he might not have the power supply with him. Mm -hmm. This energy saving definitely trans transfer to lots of efficient, uh, efficient use of this notebook when it's on the road. Yeah, look, I, I right. have helped many people upgrade both desktop and notebook computers and extend their life with an SSD and it and it makes a tremendous difference. 
Yes, definitely. The, even, a, even a startup, if you have, right, beyond startup, the, the speed of a startup um, and also on the, on the, on the multi-functional portion is so much more efficient. Mm. So in that sense, I think the SSD has a great contribution in this area down mm. here. Do you, uh, just out, out of curiosity, I mean, how long do you think traditional hard disks will be around? We, obviously, they'll be around for a long time in terms of um, continued you know, large storage you know, for yes. terabytes of, of data. But I mean, you know, will it be two or three years before no more laptop or PC in the shops that has a yeah. hard disk drive? I can't exactly say how long more it will go. So I think so long as there's a demand for that, and mm. we currently still see a big demand for hard disk drive. Reason being is that SSD and hard disk drive, they have a very different kind of targets, uh, use uh, 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 scenarios where you're looking at hard disk drive, you're looking at archiving, keeping things for mm. many years, and also having large capacities, right? Going beyond two terabytes, four terabytes, large, large capacities. Whereas for SSDs, it's very slightly different. It's fast for notebook startup, for PC startup. You have like uh, bigger capacities as you grow. It's very robust, energy efficient. So all those plays a different uh, factor to it. So it will it will continue. I would say that it will continue to progress both hard disk drive and also SSDs accordingly to the years as well. Yeah. I mean, I, I know that you have the uh, the, the ten terabyte uh, storage drives for NAS, for example, and presumably data centers. But I, I just yeah. I just see those uh, inexpensive, uh, you know, cheap PCs in uh, the the major stores, and you know, I just I feel sorry for the people that buy them because it's just too slow. <laughs> you know, yes, I mean, <laughs> I'm staying on, staying on focus on today's uh, topic. I mean, with SSDs itself, yeah. it's definitely a, a the, the benefit is that a fast startup, very efficient, energy efficient. I think that's a key thing. Yeah, yeah. having a hard disk drive, it also has its key benefits down there. I mean, well, having like a right right now with uh, with with Western Digital, we're having the benefit of both this SSDs and also the hard disk drives. It basically put us in a very good space as a complete one brand. Have of different solutions. Well, that's right. Well, you got the best of both worlds. I mean, and you, yeah. you just have to have. I mean, I'm just, I'm just simply commenting. It'll be, a, it'll be a good day for computer users in general when any computer you buy in the stores um, comes with an SSD as standard, and um, mm. it'll be good for you too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, so okay, are there more things you want? A little bit more on this. Please, part. please, so please. The next, the next factor that is very important for the consumers that is built to last. So, with the uh, two terabyte right now. It's, and getting even better uh, performance. Mm -hmm. This is what's going to happen: is that as you as you as you use the SSDs itself, it basically has more endurance because it's 3D. It has more endurance. You can use your notebook or your PC for a longer time. Mm. But we know, I mean, not everyone will use a computer for the next five years. I mean, the 10 years as such on the same notebook, you basically migrate. But still, we are able to declare that the endurance is basically has extended tremendously. Mm -hmm. That's a third point. The third point is the fourth point is that it has faster performance from the previous model that we had, from the 2D NAND uh, flash that we had previously. Mm -hmm. With the 3D, they say it has improved performance uh, accordingly. Yeah. So uh, till now, at uh, this stage, I will jump into the next slide, yeah, which I'll break down into more specifics into of the key four features down here. Mm -hmm. So I talk about uh, peak performance. So when we talk about peak performance, uh, we, when we do a testing with the engineers in HQ, when we do the testing on PC Mark with the com uh, different competitors, mm -hmm. So we basically have our Western D 3D SSDs, regardless of the blue or the ultra, it mm -hmm. basically surpasses competitors' performance. And on the right side, you see that using the uh, speed uh, read-write uh, 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 speed test itself, we also outperform competitors accordingly as well. These are not compared with the tier two brands. These are basically compared with the tier one brands in the market currently. Yeah, so right the, the, the top brands you'd be thinking of. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah. That's correct. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Right, that's one. Mm -hmm. Then the next one, I, I'm, earlier on I mentioned about power savings. So with power savings, it so, shows down here when you transfer 30 GB of file, mm -hmm. okay, 30 GB of files mm, itself, that's a lot. it's actually using 30% less energy. Yes, it's a lot. Mm. Right? But if it, for consumers who use this, I mean, think about it. It could be gamers, could be like engineers, architects, when they have very extensive designs and such, very big files, you can still transfer, and yet it's still saving you up 30% of your energy uh, efficiency and this is compared with our own uh, in-house uh, x400 which is a 2d uh, nan ssd uh, model yeah well that's an Car excellent um, yes excellent power I mean, saving yes if you if you look at how consumer uses their notebooks and such they're always on a go even mm. you know, within the office itself you wouldn't lug around your power supplies but you could be stuck in a meeting for like two to three hours mm. or so and having this energy efficiency tremendously gives you a leg up on this yeah I mean, I'm one. I'm one who always lugs my power supply around, 
And it's painful. Yes. <laughs> There's it, no it, question. It's absolute pain. Yeah. That's right. Okay. okay. Next, okay. Next slide I have is about high endurance. And this relates to different consumers using the, I mean, having different correct working characteristics. So on the left side, we're talking about years of usage. Mm -hmm. On each of, each of this column, talks about moderate workload user mm -hmm. who transfer on average 20 GB per day. Yeah. A heavy workload user, which uses about 40 GB a day. And eventually extreme workload user using about 30 GB per day. 80, so starting 80. left side. A, that's his 80 over there. Yeah. That's right. Mm. So, I mean, we have done, done uh, different kind of like a, a testings. I mean, not in the, simulated in, 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 in the closed lab and as such. Sure. So what we have done is that based on the 250 GB capacities, SSDs, mm -hmm. and if a user transfer 20 GB a day continuously, this drive basically can last him up to 14 years. Mm -hmm. And if he's using up to, uh, if he's using a two terabyte, 20 GB a day, it can last up to 70 years. I mean, of course, we know, I mean, you and I, we know, any consumers that buy has, has a notebook or PC will not keep the same PC around of for more than five years. Yeah. But we, but this is something good to know because this basically allows consumers, I mean, we're actually putting this data out there to let people know, no worries. Even if you are a very heavy workload kind of user, this thing was still built to last. It's perfectly okay. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I was genuinely thinking of asking you what how many years you thought the, um, the the drives would last i remember reading recently a uh, report based on data center usage of ssds and and they were amazed at the longevity and uh, mm -hmm. that they you know well beyond the stated um the, uh, you know figures and you are also here showing us that yes you know there's no you don't have to worry that your drive is suddenly going to freeze up and, and stop working you've got years and years even at um, heavy usage that's right. I think yeah. one one Impressive. of the key uh, technological advancement of SSDs is based just on this on on, on the architecture itself mm -hmm. because there are no moving parts. Mm. There's less chance of failure. So on that sense, it's very robust. If you think about it, SSDs very robust. Mm. Hard disk drive. You it's it's a workhorse. You can pile in all the capacities that you want. It's very large. Uh, it's very basically um, uh, value for money. Sure. High high uh, capacities for you to have large storages. Whereas for SSDs, you're talking about efficient, you're talking about energy savings. Uh, those are the key things. Those are key words that should pop up there for a user. Absolutely. And look, I mean, I've, I've seen hard disk dropped from uh, height accidentally and never to see the light of day again. And, and you just don't have that problem with SSD, which, is a, which yes. is a wonderful thing, especially when you're carrying around, you know, gigabytes yes. and terabytes of data. That's right. I mean, with, with I mean, the, the costing variance, I mean, that's a big gap between SSD pricing and the hard disk drive. But we know eventually there will be some crossover mm, points and mm. such. It's not too expensive. You, you, you charge more by migration from hard disk drive into SSDs. But at the same time, you still have a lot of uh, use for archiving. So there's, they'll always still coexist. That's how we see the market. Sure, sure. And, I mean, we'll, yeah, and we'll play towards how the the industry, or how the consumer demand plays it. Because basically, we are here for me to, 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 to drive the business. So long as there's a demand out there, Western Digital will provide the product for the consumers. Yeah, well. absolutely. As, as SSD uh, capacities and prices keep going down, so to have hard disk capacities, you know, skyrocketed, I mean, 10 terabytes. You know, I mean, yes, right. how long will it be before we have a hundred terabyte? I, I mean, I used to dream of having a one gigabyte hard drive <laughs> when I was a yeah. kid. <laughs> yeah, that's right. and that's uh, long... 20 years ago, like one, like the 20 years ago, like a 10 MB would take up the whole size of the room. Yeah, right? yeah, that... yeah. Incredible stuff. Just incredible right. stuff. So let's, right. let's keep going. Yeah. Okay, so on this um, deck down here, this mm -hmm. this page, so it talks about the different capacities that we have from 250 GB all the way to 2 terabytes with the different uh, read write speed. Basically, it's 560 read and 530 write itself. And, okay. and do you and think... All these products so, are within the three years warranty. Mm -hmm. And um, do you anticipate launching, you know, 4 terabyte and larger capacities? Next year? I think it will eventually it will, it will eventually come, but mm -hmm. currently right now we are not able to announce anything beyond that. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I, I just know that one of your competitors has, it will, has it will come. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And um, right, I think in Australia, I don't think you no longer see like eight GB cards even, right? Micro SD cards and SD cards. I think those are already out. So it's basically a progression. It will yeah, come. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Right. Good. Next, let me just go into some of the products. Let me just drill down a little bit more. Yeah, please. Yeah. I, I think you had some question about like um, how do we target the consumers that we have based on the products uh, yeah. on, on, on blue and also That's on right. the... That's right. What's uh, the difference between, yeah. the, between the two so, capacities? 
Yes. So let me just present to you on this portion. So sure. from from Western Digital for the for the for the blue products that are on here, we target them towards like new system builders, the DIY kind of guys, people who are very familiar already with storage. They have previously bought like a WD hard disk drive storage, mm -hmm. and they've been uh, uh, faithful followers of WD brand itself. And if you talk about going to a shop and you're buying storage, you always look at hard disk drive mm -hmm. and what brand are you going for. And if you're looking at WD, you're very familiar with it. Mm. And the next stage you're looking at is okay, so what's next on hard storage? Well, I heard a little bit about SSDs and what about it, you know? Then next thing you see on the shop itself, you're going to see a WD SSD. Immediately, you'll be gravitated to it looking at buying it. So that's how we look at consumer targeting with, uh, for us, targeting towards like a DIY guys, guys that want to buy the product brand new, fresh, complete. That's where they buy. We target. That's where we target them to buy from the WD. I've just In terms um, of channels. I've just unboxed whilst you were talking the WD blue SATA one terabyte. So I'm holding the actual drive next to the picture of it, <laughs> covering your face at the moment. But yes, it looks like a traditional SSD. And um, I always love how light they are, and um, yeah, wonderful. So yes. anyway, keep going. Yeah, so with the uh, WD product, we have basically have two form factors. One is the uh, 2.5 SATA, the other one is the M.2. So you have two different kind of uh, uh, form factor to cater to different kind of hard, uh, hard wife, uh, hardware uh, notebooks that you have. Mm -hmm. So we believe that in, in terms of the channels, these will be sold into the uh, system integrators and such itself. But we basically let these products out in the market so that consumers can gravitate towards either of these brands to buy them. Sure. All right, thanks. Let me go into the portion of the target market for Ultra. This yeah. is for Sandus Ultra. And we look at these consumers are the Sandus and Loyal as well. Well, mm. usually the upgraders. These mm. are the casual gamers. It could be uh, people who are very familiar with and brand for USDs, for micro SDs, and also for the yeah, kind of like a drive low drives so they are familiar with these with this brand and they would have probably might have been also buying the sandis ssds as well so relying relying on back onto those consumers who are familiar with sandis brand this is where the product is targeted towards i mean in certain different countries they could be sold in retail uh, in retailers self e-tailers and brick and mortar shops as well accordingly but it all depends on different countries sure. but i think the key important part is that the product, basically, we have two products, the WD product and also the Sandis product, but we target both these products into different consumers. One towards the, the brand models of WD, the other one for consumers who are able to relate to the Ultra. Sure. And, and But, I mean, are the, are the specs identical or is there some minor difference in specs? It's, it's, exact, it's the exact same specs. They share the same DNA the same backbone, everything's yeah. architecture, but exactly the same. I mean, it's just taking advantage of the fact that when WD bought SanDisk, it bought a valuable brand that people have known for years and years, and and you're uh, appealing to you know, either either loyal buyer. That's correct. Yeah, that's right. And also, it's also the scenario whereby when Western Digital bought over SanDisk, they also basically acquired the ability to access to SSDs as well. Mm. So that's the key point whereby. How are you going to leverage on the WD portion? Is that you now they have now have not just hard disk, but they have access to SSDs, where they're able to bring that to the consumers as well, giving our consumers two choices: hard disk drive for SSDs for their own usage. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, there must be plenty of people who will you know buy an SSD as their C drive and then buy a, a large capacity hard disk as their you know D drive or yeah. other drive, and, and have the best of both worlds in that one machine especially if it's a desktop yes that's correct i think that's exactly how we want to angle the, the direct this product as so it's basically has multi we have one we have uh two two to most consumers you'll see it as you have two different brands itself but mm. they are products that enables them to improve their usability of their uh their devices itself that's a key thing sure so are there more slides Okay, uh, what, this is the last slide that mm -hmm. we have. Yeah. So this is this per, both these products are all shipping already to Australia, mm -hmm. and uh, the speeds, as I mentioned, five sixty five thirty capacities from two fifty to two terabytes, all available uh, very soon in, in parts of Australia accordingly. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that basically runs. Uh, this is the end of my presentation slides, and we can go into more uh, specific questions uh, that you have. Sure, sure. So uh, I mean. Um 
you know, how long ago was it that, just to remind us, that was it that WD bought uh, SanDisk? And, and um, you know, clearly you've been releasing new products, but how's the, how's the merger been? Uh, I can't. I can't release any information currently right now. Uh, not a position, to, but then we have our team that can assist you with more detailed uh, uh, information. Sure, sure. Well, I mean, clearly the fact that you're launching products it's with on, both brand it's, names, yeah. it's, it's been good. Yes, it, is on, <laughs> it is ongoing. Uh, yeah. It is. It is ongoing, as I have uh, known. Yeah. Uh, but this will continue to go. I believe that this will continue to move on. Um, it's very critical to send this and also to Western Digital, of course. On sure, this. sure, sure. And uh, I mean, what are some of the, the you know most memorable milestones that for both companies over the past thirty years, leading oh, up to okay. today? You know, must be I mean, must be a lot. You you you've been um, having right. so yeah with with uh, with with WD itself. You see, we have a long legacy um, of products development, uh, hard disk drives, and then since they're acquiring of uh, of Sandis itself, we bring along the technologies of NAND flash. And this is, we are basically the world's most advanced in terms of memory nodes and technologies. I mean, the best of both brands, right, on hard disk drive and also on the solid state drives merging together. So that's the key thing that we have. In terms of what we have done so far, I mean, with Sand itself, we have uh, launched the, uh, in some time back, uh, we have launched the 48 layer 3D NAND, uh, world's first 64 layer. And you uh, just announced, you just announced 96, didn't you? Yes. That's right. So I think through the through the through the months ahead and the quarters ahead, you'll probably see more and more things coming, and we'll be always announcing. And I think at at, at Western Digital, we're always driving towards uh, thought leadership in terms of technology. So that's very important for us. That's a, that's basically our DNA uh, that we have. Sure. Now uh, you know how how do you think the st storage will evolve over the next decade? I remember hearing about uh, holographic storage and quantum storage. And you know we, there are there are terms that some uh, viewers will be familiar with, others won't. But you know petabytes and yottabytes and zettabytes, yes. exabytes. So this must be barreling towards us very quickly, like at warp speed. Yes, that's right. I mean, it, in terms of capacity, it will always increase, right? I mean, the, is there a limit? I don't think there's any limit. It's just how the technology platform will bring us there to get to that mm. um, to that level. Uh, it's, we are not short of that. And in terms of gen, um, uh, content generation, I mean, it's ongoing all the time with kids on cell phones, on GoPros, on drones. So a lot of content is being generated. So, so how we see this area play out is both all these different SSDs and hard disk drive, it will continue to coexist. I mean, they have all the different benefits of SSDs and also the hard disk drive accordingly. So it will all play a certain different role to support this humongous need for 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 memory space. Hmm. But how big we're going to petabytes, zotabyte, uh, I really do not know on that. <laughs> and, and things like quantum storage or holographic? <laughs> uh, I don't have anything on that. <laughs> sure, sorry. sure, sure. Well, it must be something they're working on in the labs. And and look, I... Mean, I'm, I'm, yeah, if, if, if you look at this this way, I mean, like um, like a one one terabyte storage on a hard disk drive, it's all it's, it's really considered the, the you know almost like a baseline for hard disk drive. For, for SSDs itself, you know, 120 GB SSDs are almost close to obsolete. Right? So mm -hmm. all these things will basically go into migration and it'll get bigger and bigger. And then at the same time, we also bring down the costing and uh, lower price for the consumers to enjoy the products with. Sure, sure. And um, I mean, I'm just looking here with the SanDisk, I'm just holding in front of the camera, here. there's a little sign saying that you have the, S you have the SSD dashboard software and you've got the uh, uh, how to install your SSD. So you've obviously got online instructions and that's correct. Yeah, is that it's, almost, it's 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 fairly quite simple for the consumers to install the the uh, the SSDs themselves I mean, through the instructional videos and such. If not, very often a lot of the uh, system integrators or also some of the retailers mm. they might have like set up points in their stores whereby they assist uh, like for a couple of bucks they can help the consumers to install and migrate all their things uh, from the old from the old uh, storage into their current sure. SSDs and such. And and does. The WD or SanDisk drives come with downloadable cloning software. Uh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't come with the cloning software itself. Uh, you get basically have, enable yourself to use the um, the, uh, the the dashboard to help you on that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's look, there's cl free cloning software out there, and sometimes it's best just to do a, a fresh installation, uh, mm. which, which never hurts. <laughs> That's so, right. so um, look, this package on top. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Well, look, I, I mean, I I uh, tried to. Um, 
I've you know I've cloned things in the past. For some people, it's it's wonderful. For other people, honestly, it's best to just start it's from start yeah, from scratch. Yeah, yeah. Now, one of the questions I like to ask as we get towards the uh, the end of the interviews is, what's the best piece of advice that you've ever received in life to help you get where you are today? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I'm kind of fortunate. Um, I would say the best advice was my dad's. Like uh, what he said was, "Love what you do." Yeah. You know? So for myself, I've always been like kind of like a gadget kind of person. Mm-hmm. I love electronics and stuff. And that's where I started off my, my, my journey. I mm-hmm. uh, started with a company uh, doing electronics mm-hmm. and it was car audio at that time. Mm, yeah. So I love car. I mean, being a, being a teenager, you know, in early 20s, get, get a first set of wheels and then you just want to have a boom box in there. Yeah. And hey, it's great that you can install it yourself. But to find a job that actually provides you the ability to read up on technological things, on, on, on car audio, mm-hmm. and able to try different stuff on a car, I think it's great. So I love that job. Yeah. And if so long as something that you enjoy doing and you can relate it back into your work, I think that's a double, that's a quadruple bonus that you have down there. So I think um, for anyone out there who says, you know, love your passion, mm-hmm. follow your dreams, I think that helps out tremendously. Yeah. So have you have you uh, put a WD or SanDisk SSD into your car, into like a media player before your kids or something? <laughs> <laughs> Um, not just yet. Currently now, it's, uh, it's being uh, proposed to my wife, but I'm um, not getting the green light. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. So, do you have any final messages for not only ITY viewers and readers, but for your current, you know, WD and SanDisk customers, current and future? Yeah, thanks a lot. So, basically, just to recap, uh, recap on today's uh, uh, this chat with you is that mm-hmm. basically at, at uh, WD, we are basically launching the world's first um, 64 layer 3D NAND technology. We are mm-hmm. very proud of that. And this comes into two uh, forms whereby you have the Watson Digital Blue yep. and also the Sandis Ultra accordingly as well. And I think the, the key thing here is with all the development, with all the tech. Uh, a jargon sometimes might be faced with for consumers. Just keep it very simple. The benefit down here is looking at 3D NAND, whereby it's vertical stacking, thereby bringing you bigger capacities, more endurance, power uh, efficiency, and also the key thing down here is that you're able to have faster performance. Performance. Well. Like yeah. Those are the key things. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Hui, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate right. it. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thanks a lot, Alex. Appreciate it. Thank you.